Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, our first guest is with us in the studio. And what better way to celebrate Christmas than giving, giving back to people who cannot repay you? Now, this is something she's best known for. She's an on air personality, she's a humanitarian, and one that has seen a void in society and has decided to step in and fill it. Her name is Dr. Yolanda N. Judge David, but she's popularly known as Aunt Landa. She's also the founder of Atlanta Be Bethel Foundation and also Market Square, Atlanta's Market Square. Yeah, Thank Atlanta's you so much for joining us. Thank you Welcome so much, my love. Thank you, love. All right, so we know that you are the definition of a humanitarian. And I, I remember the first time that we spoke with you, I literally said on my Instagram that Atlanta is like an <laughs> angel on earth. Oh, wow. You do so much. Thank you. Yet you're not burnt out. I'm, I'm wondering, I'm sure you, you, you do get burnt out sometimes. Well. How do you... <laughs> juggle everything that you do um I, I think the most important thing is i have been i have been sick for a long time and so being sick i know what pain is and i instead of looking at it as work this isn't work being a neurosurgeon is work every other thing being a business person is work making sure that someone who is in pain doesn't feel pain that isn't work that's that's like you going on a vacation so i I, I just feel like because I'm doing what I was born to do, no matter how exhausting it is physically, um, people escape into a bottle of alcohol when they're frustrated. When life frustrates me, I go out and do an outreach. <laughs> so that's like, some sort of... That it's, it's, it's my own way of... Um, uh, I, I feel it's actually my own way of coping and also trying to, trying to preach the gospel without pushing, shoving the Bible into someone's throat, but it's more like there's so much pain and there, there is so, there is so much, um, everybody wants to be more important than everybody. There's this competition because we're in a social media age, everyone wants to be noticed, so help has to be on, on cameras and all of that. So that's why the Atlanta Free Market Square is called a Free Market Square. So you see we have children come with their parents, their parents, they walk around and they select things. So Atlanta doesn't for years. A lot of people don't know who Atlanta is because for since March I've been buying stuff. We just load the whole market. We give them the fake Atlanta money. They come in, they choose the shoes. Like the boy who um, beat an apple and was asking his mom, why doesn't he have seed like mango? And so they go back and say, mommy took me to the market square. It's just human. We, we're, we're trying to humanize charity, not about trying to look good because we're given, but people have gone through a whole lot. And when you then decide to live a life of giving, knowing what pain is, again, I, I, I think because I can't remember when I wasn't in pain. So knowing what pain is, I, I empathize and I understand what pain is. Sadly, some people who do not know what pain is feel that people are exaggerating. You feel that people who are on the privilege that poor but no because i have a lady who came to the last year market square she was homeless hungry she got one sewing machine food to eat and this market square she now has three machines of her own and she has students and she's coming to teach at our free tertiary academy the academy where we teach express cities i have express cities ex-prisoners that now are landlords in it do just because we gave them the chance to actually start over. So the fact that someone is homeless or someone is on the privilege doesn't necessarily mean that the person is lazy. Some of us just um, kind of, we were blessed to be put in places where life happened. But I tell you, your worst horrific moment is someone's dream and mm -hmm. someone's fantasy. Okay. So now, I'm going to ask, are there times where you feel weak? Oh, yeah, I'm I, always... I know that you're a very strong person from all that you have yeah. said and with all that you do, but are there times when Yolanda sits and says, I'm tired? Oh, well, I am always, 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 that's the thing I say. I think I am proof of um, doing it afraid. There's one thing about me that people do not realize, I'm introverted. And so you never see me at any event. You never, except is when I'm being with the ambassador of a, a brand or something and I'm forced there. You don't see me at weddings or parties because uh, I am recluse. I, I fear crowds. And that's why even with the Market Square, Alibaba created the 
ambassadorial position so that my friends now go out to the cameras while I can be hidden. I, I am always exhausted. Sometimes I go for treatments and from treatments I come and there were there were times like this year I was really sick and there were times I just I just felt like okay I'm a good person I've been doing all of this and why is it that my life is in bad and that's where i feel like god blesses us with certain people that are awesome people to help us like annoyingly remind you of who you are and what you're called and that's what my king does he, it he's he annoyingly does that you want to get frustrated i want to quit and then he's like telling you you're Atlanta. One of my names is Eagle, your ego. The ego re renews themselves. And I think surrounding yourself with the right people, and because I am an introvert, it's very easy for me to walk away from anything or any group of people that do not energize me. Yes. And so with all of the negative energy, I'm not scared to say to you, I love you, we are blood, but you can live in my heart, but not in my life. And so my ability to work, and no matter, without apologies, because I, I am not blessed with the luxury of good health. So I have given myself the luxury of excessive happiness, anything that reduces my happiness. If, and there are some people, I have been stabbed severally by the people I'm rehabilitating. After levels of, after we go through all of the levels of rehabilitation and you refuse to be rehabilitated, I do not stick on that one person who refuses to work. I let go of you and then move on to the next project. Because after a period of time, you need rules and regulations and you need to always look at the big picture. And the big picture is the fact that we're just here for a fleeting time. I could dwell on all of my needs, all of my inadequacies, all of the misconceptions, especially when I came into this country, everybody was like, she cannot be that good. Why is she doing this? She, she has an ulterior motive. Yes, I was going to ask yeah. that because people people usually get uncomfortable sometimes when they see somebody who does too much good. Yeah. There, there's, in fact, I would, I would have thought there is no such thing as too much good. But you do a lot. And, and, and that now makes a lot of people, it, it, it's funny, a lot of people hate you a lot of companies, it's as bad as, okay, this is very interesting. Like, we put out a lot of letters and we got to over 400 replies of negatives saying that the demographic and the people that we help at the market square, the people are too small and, and too poor to be able to afford any of their products. So they cannot identify with us or even sponsor or give us their promotional stuff because there is no ROI on, and I'm like, it's supposed to be CSR, right? But you're like, okay, even with CSR, if these people were not that homeless, if they could afford any of our, but your people are below the low. And when you get things like that, it then makes you realize that we somehow have created hierarchies in our head. And so we rather would feel good to give 1,000 to a girl that is on the road begging so that other people will see that, ah, they gave 1,000. We go to church, your mother is wearing a ton of clothes at home, but you stand up when they call for one million naira a donation. It's all about the going, going poor, trying to look rich, trying to impress, creating the impression. Because sadly, we live in a cyber age where our lives are placed on values of likes and what we project, not our reality. But the reality is every day that you go to bed in your house and you're angry that the noise from the generator is keeping you awake, there is someone who is sleeping under the bridge who has been, the last rape case we rescued was by the beach, uh, uh, a widow who was thrown out with her three-month-old baby. She was raped by some prophet who was praying or whatever there, and she then had to run to the church, and the church locked the gate. And so she, you know, when you see all of these stories, you start wondering, where is our humanity? Where do we draw the line? So now the question I want to ask you is, how are you still able to keep your sanity? I'll ask this because mm -hmm. we know you've spoken so much about you know, your life and the challenges, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how you've had 18 miscarriages, mm -hmm. and you basically having to live through pain for the larger part of your life. And yet you see these people who come to share their stories. What that does is sometimes it has, a lot of the time, has a way of sipping out the energy from you, making you feel exhausted. How do you refresh? How do you yeah. rejuvenate? I, I, I think that's... From the outside, that's what people think. But I really think that 
I feel whenever I'm going through crazy hell, for example, at the beginning of this year, my doctor said to me there was no way I was going to make it till the end of the year. It wasn't possible. So I needed transplants, I needed treatments, and it wasn't possible. And so what I did was to decide I was going to die empty. So not telling anybody, got out, and I found that the Atlanta Free Tertiary Academy wrote to several countries to try to make sure that. And, you know, I tried to do those things in case I wasn't, I wasn't here anymore, let these structures work. Now, in creating those structures and getting lost in these people's issues, I kind of started living not like, as though I was dying. I was living as though I needed to finish the project. And that's why at the market square now, you're seeing we had 6,000 ex-prisoners and ex-prostitutes enroll for that school, and we're graduating about 300 of them with their diplomas. Of course, some of them dropped out. Some of them need extra training, but we have 300 graduates. If I did not get that bad news at the beginning of the year, I wouldn't have gotten lost into it. So, look at you. So you some made people, it to the end of the exactly, year. Exactly. That's my I point. I hope you would... You know, stay much longer In, in my us. head now, I am thinking of, because by next year, we are launching the Atlanta villages. I've already um, purchased the land already. It's, we have safe houses now. Our safe houses are 300 across the town. They are one rooms that I pay. And so when you're homeless, you just go and then you stay. Wow. And then... Um, after you get your apartment, you then move for another person to stay. But now we're now building the villages, which will now be dormitory styles, where we'll have hospitals in them, and people can now live as a community. So every local government is supposed to have one, and we're going to be starting with one local government and move through. So you see, all those projects are now the things that I, I refuse to look at my personal life, like... Pastors yeah. were using me to preach when I was having my miscarriages because because of how my body shape is. Once I get pregnant, before I'm two or three months, you notice there's something in there because formally, you know, how I am. So once I miscarry three months, four months, five months, they'll now start saying to you, you know that lady that used to um, do free IVFs because I'm a neurosurgeon with my primary residency wow. in gynecology. So you see, she helps other people get pregnant. She sponsors fiber. But you see, when God wants to deal with you, he wouldn't let you have your baby. Who knows what she's done in her life, what the past she's trying to replace it. So you see, those kind of things, if you then listen to those, it would not allow you it would not allow you be what you want to be, but I, I, I kid you not. I have certain times when I just want to walk away. Like last week, I felt like I, we got letter 400 and it was the same thing. And then I went to my phone and Mama Bimbo Fashola, she's one of, uh, 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 I, I can't call her volunteer because she does everything without even asking. And she sent me this prayer message and reminding me of all of the effort and stuff that we're doing. And then I went out, got to the foundation. A woman had dropped her baby, abandoned child whose bladder was out outside the body. And I, the moment I got there, picked up that baby. I even forgot that some moments ago I wanted to. So basically, this just reminds <laughs> us of the fact that Helping people is therapeutic for you. Yes, as well. if for, for me, just... it's actually my escape. It's 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 my alcohol bottle. It's my way it's to your actually life. survive. I'm just I do have this question before we go. <laughs> Has there any been any time that you've been scared? You know, you mentioned getting prostitutes out of the street, yeah. prisoners, giving them life. Has there ever been that time when you got scared of the people surrounding you? This is the reason why I asked yeah. that question. My mom is an evangelist, okay. and she used to do works like this. Okay. She still does. Yeah. Now, there have been times when she has been endangered while yeah. doing this. Yeah. You know, she had this one person she took to rehab mm -hmm. who stabbed. My mom has a stab scar mm -hmm. from one of the times of, you know, issues like that. Has there ever been time oh, when you feel so endangered? Sure. Yeah, by sure. The you, you're trying to say always, You're always doing it, Alfred. The truth is, Right now, if you go to my message, my, my WhatsApp message, you're seeing messages from my family and support system saying to me, breach through Saturday. The fact that I'm, I'm introverted, I'm recluse. The fact that I'm going to be meeting 1,000 people, 2,000, and we have up to 30,000 people coming for Saturday's free market square. And the fact that I'm going to have that crowd worries me. We do prostitute pickup. What that means is we drive expensive cars and we pay the prostitutes for the weekend. And when we pay them, they stay with us for one week. Weekend. Instead of us sleeping with them, we give them the options of how their life can be better. If they choose to go after that, they go. If not, we pay their we pay off their um, 
what you call them, they have their time. pimps. Yeah. They have their pimps, actually. So we have to pay off their pimps to own them. And then when they get their freedom, they start life again. See, throughout all those times, you're always afraid. And that's, I think that's what anybody should take from this, inter especially in this time right now. There's never a better time for us to show love, to care, um, because it's not about because I was born Christmas Day, so I wait every Christmas to then help so people. So you mustn't always yeah, wait for a it's particular not just day for or a particular you, 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 season. You, you always just, look for and you must not be also as crazy as I am, but just make sure that everybody in your life feels, if you have to introduce yourself as a Christian, then you're not really living. Hmm. You have to show care. You cannot cook and then there's a person you drive outside and they're always hungry. That food you throw away, those little things, your dresses that you're waiting to lose weight to fit. Exactly, you give them away. In someone. fact, and Ananda, this thing is, it's happening, Market Square is happening on Saturday. Yes, please. How can people be a part of it? Those who want to come, those who want to support. Okay, the, uh, most importantly, the Atlanta Market Square is channeled for anyone who knows that on Christmas Day you're going to wake up, you have no food, you have no clothes, you have no accommodation. We have, right now we've paid for 600 free accommodations and by God's grace we'll be paying for more before Saturday. So if you know you are homeless or you know someone who is homeless, they could come, okay, they could come so... Oh, sorry. They could come and then we, we, we will try to get an accommodation for you. Then temporary accommodations are also there until we put you into your more permanent ones. The permanent ones we pay for just one year. And then after your one year, we hope that you start. We're setting up businesses. So we have free grinding machines. We have sewing machines. We have popcorn machines. And then we also then have anything you see in the marketplace. Everything Fantastic. you see in my tour. And all those things you can get. If you are have donations yeah. or whatever you have for us or you just want to volunteer your manpower i hope you come to us first stack it's plot two and i just check on on instagram, instagram my on handle is a-u-n-t-l-a-n-d-a a-u-n-t-l-a-n-d-a -A -A, or hashtag atlanta market square and just 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 even so, if you cannot come just do good this christmas all for right someone. so the hashtag is atlanta market square you can follow her on social media to get all the information as well thank you so much for all that you thank welcome. you for giving back and thank you for creating and of impact. course you are an ambassador so we're going to see you on saturday <laughs> selling I fish see you as well. uh -huh. to enjoy more of this our go get videos when you just watch press this button to subscribe on top of our youtube page you go love her